Hey everybody, this is Perch. Let's go into the mailbag. What do we got here? Oh, here's, oh, wait a minute. I think I got another ad. All right, sponsorship, here we go. Hi, are you interested in ads? The ads is all capitalized, which indicates that it, this, this person means business. The PR manager, I wonder if there's a hyphen between PR and manager. That's kind of weird. The PR manager of the game, Stray, writes to you. I wonder, is, is this a, are they saying this to the first person? Or they're going to write to me? It, am I talking to the PR manager of the game, Stray, right now? I don't think so, based on the name here, which is blue Olibwasen is the screen name. But maybe that's, maybe I should look this thing up. And the game Stray uh, has uh, Blue 12 is the PR manager. I don't know, maybe. Anyway, hello, Blue 12. Um, okay, now we got to explain. Stray is a third-person adventure game. Unlike this mail, which is uh, also written in the... But anyway, it has elements of an open world. It's not an open world. It just has elements of an open world. Okay, so it's a partially open world. As well as an emphasis on atmosphere and art. Two periods. I would very much appreciate it if you could let me know whether you're interested or no. I'm interested. How much am I making here? How much can I make? Let's. So I'll give you even a sample. Stray, a third-person adventure game. You're going to have so much fucking fun playing Stray, you're not even going to believe it. You're going to be sitting there with a boner the entire time how happy you are playing Stray. Why? Because it's a, it's, it's a, it, it has elements of an open world. Some open, some closed. But that's life. Sometimes things are closed, sometimes things are open. The parts that are good are open. We closed all the dumbass parts, like the bathrooms and Arby's. You can't go in the Arby's, but you'd bet your fucking ass you can go in the McDonald's, but not Arby's. This isn't a horror game. It is an adventure game. And here's the best part. It's got atmosphere and art. That's it. That's all there is. Atmosphere, art, some open world, adventure. Stray. Download today. Yeah, I'm interested. Give me my check. Anyway, um, let's get to a real mail. It says, um, uh, what's the deal with European comics? Every time I, um, I, I see what's the deal, I say it's like, what's the deal with that comic? Anyway, Perch. All right, Perch. I like it when people get right to the point. They don't go like, hello, Perch. How you doing, Perch? Hope you're doing well, Perch. Fuck you, Perch. They just go, Perch. Perch. Why haven't French, Italian, and other European comics managed to penetrate, <laughs> penetrate the European market like manga has? It's not moist enough. That's why. They also seem to offer that something else that might be absent from American comics, but they make absolutely no impact in sales and are more or less unknown in U.S. shops. Are they too boutique? Do they not have the required marketing that anime provides for manga? Thanks for your time. All right. All right. I got an answer for you. A legitimate one, not a jokey one. Here are three reasons why European comics, which are awesome, by the way. There are some really great European comics out there. Lots of different genres. Good things. Pretty amazing artists. Definitely uh, getting hooked up to. And we, we should do a video on some uh, amazing European art. Anyway, great stuff. Number one. Distribution of European comics into the U.S. is uh, is not great. There are com like Paper Cuts has some. Uh, there's a couple people, but but there has not been a concerted, powerful effort to distribute, and distribute outside the LCS. By contrast, Viz and several of the other companies that have distributed manga focused, I would say, primarily on brick and mortar bookshops getting stuff into Amazon, fulfilling the broader channel. And the LCS was almost an afterthought. Definitely put some material there, but they, that was not just the tip of the spear of their strategy. They were going for other, uh, other systems to get that content out there. So that's number one, and it's a big one. Number two, and I think some of you will disagree with this, manga has the illusion or appearance of appealing to a younger audience. Now, why does that matter? Well, for one, several of the stores and the places that, uh, that the, you know, the comics get distributed to 
um, bought in because they believed manga was more all ages and, you know, would appeal to kids. And they thought that because, you know, anime and, and the animation style is popular with kids. And so it was a crossover product that people vaguely recognized. And so it went in. It is why when you go to Target, you'll see like Chainsaw Man and Demon Slayer and books like that sitting there next to the games, arguably marketed to kids. In many Target stores, they have the manga little shelf in the kids area of books. You then pick up uh, Demon Slayer and Chainsaw Man or One Punch Man, some of these things, and you realize this book is definitely not for kids. Or at least it's not for kids in the same way that Dog Man, which is sitting right next to it, is for kids. However, it's there, and uh, maybe because of COVID or maybe because parents just don't give a fuck anymore or who knows, there has not been the religious right or the whatever the left equivalent is of people really going to attack manga. Yes, <clears throat> you do see people on Twitter from the left talking about, you know, manga titties and how bad they are, but there's no, there's been no, like, you know, protests in front of Target or, you know, really angry Karen letters or anything. There, there really hasn't been. <clears throat> so as a result, um, manga is distributed to more places, and it's distributed at a younger age. And as a result, um, kids who always like to see something a little bit outside their age range pick up a book, convince their like, "Hey, mom, buy this book of uh, these you know cartoon looking characters with the big eyes that kind of remind you of uh, you know Paw Patrol that I was watching earlier." It's uh, yeah, I know it's called Chainsaw Man, but you know it, it's, it can't be that bad. And mom is like, all right, if they'll shut you up, I'll buy it. And then this is one reason why manga is successful is because younger children, younger audiences are, you know, able to see something that feels a little bit beyond their age range. And it, they're excited by that. That is one of the factors. Uh, the last reason is uh, European comics, you know, have not really nailed the variety of genre or at least marketing to that variety that manga has and some YA has. Um, European comics tend to feel a little bit more like they are a foreign comic than manga, which is strange because a lot of manga talks very heavily about Japanese values and traditions and other things that go on in there. So it, it, is, it is definitely a cultural product, but European comics tend to skew just slightly more, I don't know, it just, it just feels like something that is definitely from another country. Now, why does that matter? Well, it's just one barrier to get over. Get manga managed to go, hey, it's a superhero book. Hey, it's an adventure book. Hey, look, uh, you know, it's One Piece. It's a book about pirates, and some people have magical superpowers. Okay. And, and you know, it, it works. You, you, you know, as a parent, you kind of gloss over the fact that Sanji is trying to, you know, get with Nami, who's got giant boobs all of a sudden, and Robin is walking around with her cleavage just hanging out and blowing, you know, bubbly and blowing out of her dress and Brooks asking for panties and, you know, all that kind of, I mean, yeah, that that's what's going on. European comics uh, have less of that immediate kind of appeal. Kid picks up or young, you know, new comic reader picks up My Hero Academia and they see like characters flying around, feels very superhero-y. Um, there's apparently some girl who's invisible, which means she's walking around with her titties out, but you can't see them. And, you know, then you pick up a European comic book and, I mean, like you get, and keep in mind, probably one of my favorite artists of all time, Morbius, um, Mobius, Morbius, Morbius, the vampire, one of my favorite uh, comic artists of all time, no, Mobius, um, absolutely brilliant artist, probably one of the best artists of all time, definitely in the top five for me by, with, by, by a huge margin. It has less crossover appeal. It just does. For new comic readers, you, you can kind of recognize it as art, but you know it, it, you have to commit more to the story. Manga is definitely easier to just pick up and run with. Feels a little bit more disposable. And feeling more disposable in this case is a good thing. Because um, you are, you know, if you're new to comics, you aren't thinking about collecting, you're not thinking about buying a bag and a board, you're not thinking about all this long-term stuff, you're thinking about something to read and you know, then maybe go sell the book at Asprey Books or forget it or throw it up on a shelf or who knows. You're not thinking about it for longevity. And manga, both on size, format, price, you know, a lot of that stuff, a lot of stuff around newsstand, newsprint, it just feels, it, it, it feels like a cup thing you could dip into easier. 
I think the distribution of European comics that have happened in the U.S. also have tended to treat the books with more respect, which, again, as a collector, I love. But if you're trying to look at something you can kind of just tap into or, you know, dip into, then, you know, you're not really wanting a hardbound trade on special glossy parchment paper and kind of all the collector item stuff that, you know, gets people who are comic book collectors pretty excited but to the normie mass audience, it's just starting with this feels maybe intimidating. Also drives up the price point. So, I, I, you know, there's probably other answers. I'm curious to hear yours. But those would be mine. I think all these things represent tiny little barriers to, uh, to European comics really succeeding in this market. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for the mail. Awesome one. Like and subscribe, of course. And, yeah, thanks for listening.